Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Namaste Center. It is a, a nice, beautiful day in Henderson County, North Carolina. In case you're in Florida, you know, it's about 70 degrees, blue skies, you know, so you don't have anything on us up here today. Yeah, well, we can be, whatever. Take it. <laughs> Not quite, but we're working on it. But anyway, uh, it's so uh, wonderful to see everyone here today in anticipation of the holiday season and uh, uh, to join together in this uh, not only service, but all the activities that we're going to have here after today. And um, it's really an opportunity for us to really show up fully for this you know, holiday season, remember what, what we're here for, and to, to bless all those who we can in everything we do this season. Because we're blessed, but there's many people who, who aren't quite as blessed as we are or realize their blessings. And so I believe it's our role to come here and offer them the gift of our love in whatever way that seems comfortable for you. And it may just be a little more kindness, patience. Uh, you know, you can only imagine what those uh, checkout people at Walmart are going through these days. And uh, so if they may seem a little stressed at the grocery or at the shopping centers, uh, give them a little bit of a pat on the back and a wink and, and thank them for what they're doing. I, I know that'll go a long way. But I, I did want to talk uh, a bit today about, you know, this week, of course, uh, it's been we, uh, months, I think, that we've heard, you know, that Nelson Mandela was uh, ready to make his transition, and then he'd get a little better, and then, he, um, then he'd uh, get sick again, and we've been going through this little wave of, of his uh, illness, and he did succumb to his transition this past week, and, um, you know, the world lost uh, an amazing, an amazing man uh, this week. And I, there's so many things I just love about who he is, what he stood for, what he brought to the world. And it's, um, I, I wanted to share some of that with you because it's so relevant to who we are and how we can relate it to our own lives. Because here's, here's a man who literally uh, stood up for something and gave his entire life to that goal of freedom and oneness and peace and, and caring to an entire nation. And that's one man. And he spent uh, 20 plus years in a, in a terrible situation in prison uh, doing what he knew was the right thing to do. And yet sometimes we're, we feel like we're a little irritated if we're asked to maybe do something far, far less than that. So maybe uh, we can re-examine ourselves and see where we could maybe step up to be a little bit more uh, godly, more loving like he is. One thing I'd like to um, uh, start with is, uh, as many of you all know Marianne Williamson's quote, which I'm not going to read it, the whole thing, but it starts out, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. And it's such a wonderful, uh, powerful quote that was actually written in 1992, and it was in her book, Return to Love. Now, there is a reason I'm going into this. In 1994, you were all of a sudden seeing this quote everywhere, which it was a beautiful quote, uh, and it was being given, Nelson Mandela was, been, was given the credit for that. And everywhere you'd go, it was like, Nelson Mandela says this quote. And uh, I was like, no, that was in Marianne's book two years ago. And um, so I had a chance to ask Marianne about that. And she said, she was so gracious. She says, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and, um, you know, so it, it was a powerful quote, and it does reflect him, too. And I, I have a feeling that the people who, even this past week on Facebook, they, they, that quote was referenced many times to him. And the, the beauty of it is, since we're all one, it's everyone's quote anyway. So what a blessing. But there's, there's some quotes that I'd like to share that were his that I think were, were just equally powerful or, you know, and, and transformational for all of us. And, and the one here is, is so true because, um, you know, we st I think we've made strides in, in many ways towards prejudice and hatred, but we, we still have quite a way to go. And um, maybe here at the Namaste Center, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're much more tolerant maybe than other places. But again, it's not about pointing fingers and judging. It's about understanding and compassion. And one of his quotes here is, says, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. 
People learn to hate, and if they learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human than its opposite. So I think that's so powerful. You know, yes, maybe, you know, when we look at these people who, um, who seem so hateful and angry and vengeful, you know, somewhere that's in their program. You can say it came from their, maybe their family life or lack thereof. It could have come from a past life, who knows? But the fact is, it's in the, it's in the field somewhere. And rather than pointing a finger and judging and condemning, I believe it's our role to reach out and extend the greatest degree of love we can and to help them see for themselves, help them see what they can't see for themselves at the current time. This past week, uh, a few of us in here had the, the uh, real pleasure of uh, going down to the courthouse here. And uh, there, it's interesting because in the courtroom, and it, it was all, it wasn't a bad thing. I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything bad, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a little bit, no, <laughs> nothing to do with me. But uh, anyway, uh, but it was, it, it's so interesting. I've, I've, I've went last year on a, a traffic thing with a friend, and I guess uh, that Ellen and I are the supporters of our friends who have to go through this uncomfortable stuff. And anyway, I really, I tell you, it's not the Namaste Center in there. <laughs> it is, you, you get into this courtroom and it's packed with kids and all sort people with all sorts of life challenges that we can't even imagine. I mean, really, it's it's uh, they had the juvenile court hearings that day too, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there was a couple of kids there, and I just my heart was like, wow, you know, I I was thinking here they are, 15, 16 years old, and they're already in the system. They're living in detention homes. Um, there was this one boy who who struck me. Uh, really strongly and he was Hispanic and beautiful I mean this kid was really striking beautiful and he was little and um, you know his grandparents who were feeble you know they came walking in and the whole situation it was sad you know oh. <laughs> but it's uh, but the good news <clears throat> So anyway, I think that, you know, it's real easy to, you know, want to judge, say, you know, how can someone do that, blah, blah, blah. And I don't even know what the kid did, but obviously it was something not so good because he was sent to a detention home. And, uh, you know, he, he just didn't know better. You know, he doesn't have the tools. Uh, he's, he was doing the best he had with, uh, I was talking to someone this week, truly, we're all doing the best we can with what we have, period. So rather than pointing fingers, judging, condemning, it's, uh, I think it's uh, you know, our job as spiritual beings to, to give that little extra dose of love to those people because they need it. And you know, that's why you know, the mainstay crew that we're collecting these gifts for, uh, you know, these are also uh, families that are in, in, in dire straits that need our support. So this is something that we can do. But, you know, it doesn't have to be, of course, we all want to do something on the holidays, but there's also 51 other weeks of the year where these people can use our support. And, I, you know, I know in Florida we had a huge outreach program. Many weeks we reached out to up to 2,000 people in Palm Beach County. And uh, it was, uh, their, their problems don't stop after Christmas, let's just put it that way. And um, so there's lots of organizations. I don't. I, I know we can do things here uh, at the Namaste Center as we see uh, feel inspired to do so. But you know, think about go into your heart and say, how could I be of service in this community? And and it doesn't mean that you take on some grandiose uh, task. It can be very simple. It can be something you know, uh, going to the Boys and Girls Club once a, a month and just uh, hanging out with the kids. There was one, uh, an advocate, there was an advocate there with this young man. And, uh, you know, it, um, he, was a, he was a young, probably 30-ish guy that was there to, to really be a, a big brother to this kid. And there's things we can do. So, you know, Nelson Mandela, his life definitely reflected that of service. And, you know, he was, of course, South Africa's first president, Nobel Prize winner, 
Uh, he was an anti-apartheid icon. Um, it's on and on and on. Well, it's very interesting to me, if you look at the Mandela pictures pre-prison and the ones that we know now that we see where he's got the beautiful gray hair and the gentle face, he was a radical dude, you know? Uh, he, I mean, he was scary looking in his youth. And, uh, you know, he, um, he definitely uh, was out there uh, hitting the pavement, making a strong statement, you know, for, for equality and freedom and peace. And of course, it wasn't uh, received in the most positive of, uh, of ways by many people. So, you know, he did, as I said, he laid his life on the line for what he came to believe was his mission. And so a, a big mission it was. And he certainly um, inspired us. Uh, I read a, a little bit of a story from Bill Clinton this week, and I thought it was so wonderful. Um, let me find this here. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a story that Bill Clinton uh, told about uh, Nelson Mandela. And he said, um, uh, to, President Clinton said to Nelson Mandela, that was pretty smart of you to have your jailers come to the inauguration and all of that. But let me ask you something. Didn't you really hate them for what they did? And Nelson replied, oh yeah, I hated them for a long time. I stayed alive on hate for 12 years. I broke rocks every day and I stayed alive on hate. They took a lot away from me. They took away from me my wife and it subsequently destroyed my marriage. They took away from me my seeing my children grow up. They abused me mentally and physically. And one day I realized they could take it all except my mind and my heart. He paused and continued. Those things I would have to give to them and I simply decided not to give it to them. And so President Clinton said to uh, Nelson Mandela, well, what about when you were getting out of prison? The day you got out of prison in 1990, it was a Sunday morning, and I got my daughter up early and asked her to come down to the kitchen as I turned on the television. And I said, Chelsea, I want you to watch this. This is one of the most important things you'll ever see. I watched you walk down that dirt road to freedom. Now, when you were walking down there and you realized how long you had been in prison, didn't you hate them? Didn't you feel some hatred? And Nelson replied, yes, I did, a little bit. I felt that. And frankly, I was kind of afraid too, because I hadn't been free in so long. As I felt the anger rising up, I thought to myself, Nelson, they have already had you for 27 years, and if you keep hating them, they'll have you again. And I said to myself, I want to be free, so I let it go. Pretty powerful. And, you know, it's, I think that it's another quote that he makes here is he says, as he walked towards that gate uh, that would lead to his freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I would still be in prison, which parallels exactly what he had told President Clinton. And the point, you know, that I'm choosing to make here, bless it and burn it, you know, 2000, I love that, Susan, thank you so much, because, you know, here we are, we think we have justifiable reason to be upset or angry or to condemn or stay caught in this whirlwind of um, rationalizing our anger. But it's, it's really like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die is really what holding on to that is. So, you know, here we are, we're moving into this beautiful holiday season. And, you know, we have a lot of time to reflect. Uh, and the beauty of it is, I, I love the holidays because it does bring us to that place of, you know what, I want to go into the new year renewed and healed and free of any hatred or anger that I may still be holding on to. Because if there's a, a thread, a shred of hatred or anger or upset in my consciousness, then that's an impediment to my own inner awakening. I know that uh, um, the, uh, I love the statement from A Course in Miracles that says, uh, a teacher of God is generous out of self-interest. And what that's really saying is that you know, we can come here together, and, and yet we are aspiring to grow and heal together spiritually and be more loving, of course. But, you know, when it boils down to it, I think once we understand that we are all one, that my salvation, my awakening is dependent on my forgiveness of self and others, and that if I hold a grievance towards anyone, including myself, 
that I'm just keeping a veil between me and my own light. So it's it's really important, you know, to, when we see that person, when they when you know you think of that one person who just immediately you can just feel the blood boil, or that you know memory of something, and you get upset or angry about it, you know that's your prison right there. That's the prison really Mandela was talking about. And you know, yeah, we have lessons to learn, and we're all on this path and journey together. But in the end, you know, that last step is holding our brother's hand and no one is exempt. So we really need to um, pay, really pay attention to this. And I, I'm so blessed and grateful for everyone who, who does participate here because I see this love in action. I experience it. Um, I see it every day. I see people just choosing kindness over judgment. And, you know, really step it up to their true uh, spiritual um, enlightenment and, and acting from that premise. Now, a couple of quotes uh, that uh, I just would like to share because he had so many wonderful ones. And that is, um, it's, uh, this is very similar to A Course in Miracles. He said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers the fear. And, you know, if we're holding on to fear, and really judgment is a fear. Condemnation is fear. If I was feeling loved and loving, I would not come from that place. I would come from only extension with my hands open and my heart open. It wouldn't come from a place of, of judgment and condemnation. So once we can conquer that judgment of self and others, we can transcend that fear. And I love this one. It always seems impossible until it's done. And I, I can speak from that. I have much experience. It's like, you know, it's just like, ugh. But then when it's done, it's like, what, you look back and it says, that wasn't so bad, you know? And uh, so I, I love, um, I really love uh, the power of that statement because that one resonated with me. And, uh, you know, this is, this is so powerful and, and reflective of what, I wanted, what I've been sharing with you today. And it says, when a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. And, you know, it's, we do have, you know, yeah, we can sit here and we can eat bonbons by the TV and do whatever. But it's, and I'm not telling us all to go out here and create a big whatever, or not, maybe. But, you know, we do have a mission and a purpose in this life. And if we can find that, you know, ask. Uh, I love what Wayne Dyer, he really inspired me early on. He said his mantra all day long is just, how may I serve? How may I serve? And if we can just stay in that spirit of service and just ask, we'll be led. You'll be led, and your service may be as simple as just smiling at everyone you meet, uh, giving a, a donation, um, you know, to someone in need, whatever. You'll be inspired, you'll know, because you're living more from that sensitivity and that awareness. And so it's, um, I really like this too, because I think that this center here, we do have pretty open minds. We're pretty independent thinkers here. That's the goal. It's not, I share ideas, we, we offer other teachers and presenters who share all aspects of spirituality, because we're all at different places. But with an open mind, we can find our, our fit. And um, he goes on to say, I like friends who have independent minds because they tend to make you see your problems from all angles. And so instead of, bye-bye, have fun. And uh, anyway, um, you know, we're, if we can honestly support each other and offer perspectives from all angles, I think that's very empowering. Instead of going in, and this is no criticism intended, but many uh, organizations, churches, and so on, they do uh, dictate a doctrine or a dogma, on, operate from doctrine and dogma. And it's, it's useful and, and certainly helpful. I'm not condemning it in, by any means. But I think that really the, the real goal is to go inside and to be able to live from our heart, live from that place where we are choosing love in every moment and instead of you know we can have a conversation and share ideas with each other and we don't have to even agree but we can certainly uh, share with an open mind and an open heart and I, I see that love in action as well every day so it's it really is up to us to um, uh, to come from that spirit and I think he was a great role model and I think that 
he along with many others, if we could use them as examples of what is potential in each and every one of us. This world doesn't have to be, no one has to be hungry. No one has to uh, be sad. It's just up to us who may have, a, uh, let's see what the Course of Miracles says about that. It says those who temp seem to temporarily have more than those who seem to temporarily have less, you know, that's our role. So it's up, what can I give? Because what I give is, is coming back to me because what I give is a gift to myself because you are me and I am you and it's very cool. So in the end, perhaps the uh, best idea that sums up Nelson Mandela's religious and spiritual outlook is the African concept of what they call Ubuntu. Uh, and Nelson explained this uh, concept. And he goes on to say, a traveler through a country would stop at a village and he didn't have to ask for food or water. Once he stopped, the people gave him food, they entertained him. This is one aspect of Ubuntu, but it will have various other aspects. Ubuntu does not mean that people should not enrich themselves. The question therefore is, are, are you going to do so in order to enable the community around you to be able to improve? And you know, wouldn't it be nice if we were that tuned in and that perspective, perceptive that if someone, we just knew what they needed and we could just reach out and offer it to them. And you know, just that little, you know, pay it forward, that little silent, uh, um, you, you see a waitress who's struggling and maybe give a little extra tip. Just that naturally sensing someone's need and knowing that we are abundant beyond measure. And if I feel like I don't have enough to share, then I need to take a look at myself and see where am I uh, experiencing lack in my own self that I feel I don't have enough to share. And so I just ask that we all enter into this season in that Ubuntu spirit of really being perspective, being open-hearted, being open-minded, being tolerant, patient, loving, and just see what we can create because miracles do abound us. So I really bless uh, each and every one of you. I love you all very much. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, see it, being with you next week and being part of the audience here and uh, experiencing all the great speakers that we have for the rest of the year. So let's do our best to live in the spirit of love and be the blessings and the light of this world which we are created to be. And so it is, namaste.